Well, we're moving away from the coast now and travelling just a few kilometres inland to Cleary's Town. That's a small Wexford townland not too far from Consor Point. And it was here in 1972 that the late Frank Hall came to see steam threshing in operation on the Rochford Farm. On top of the mill, as, as it's called, or the thrasher, you must have five helpers. Two people put in the, the shields and two cut the twine on the shields. And uh, then as the grain comes down, you have two to three at the sacks. First, and you cut it with the reaper and the binder, and you put it in stuck. You can stand up in a, in a kind of a, they call it a stuck. And, uh, the element then, or the, 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 the weather then, will season it out so much before you bring it in at all to put it in your reef. It could take maybe a month or six weeks out there seasoning in the stuff, in the weather, and in a straw as well. Mm. And it's all adding to its quality. The machine in itself takes very little upkeep. They were made so robust and strong and the best of workmanship when they took. Only today, of course, the price of fuel, the price of coal has put them out, out of commission compared with the diesel, diesel engine. Uh, she, you, and besides the labour of drawing water to the boiler and the, the price of coal, uh, it calls for a couple of extra men it's a scarce commodity today. I, I wouldn't be able to give you the exact amount of water to use, but uh, around a hundredweight of coal per hour, if you're working pretty hard, you know. She'll lose water accordingly, you know, then. As she, the harder she works, the more coal and the more water she'll lose, naturally. You know. In most cases, water is on tap, you see, and you can just pipe it over. But it wasn't in those days when they were, the engine was more in, 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 in use. They had to carry it with a bucket, probably like a long distance, which is a very tedious and boring job. It was mostly left to a chap. <laughs> what, what's a chap? <laughs> Small boy. <laughs> Well, since that uh, footage was shot, unfortunately, John Rochford, the farmer that you've been saying, he has uh, passed on. But the Rochford family are still working the land and still deeply immersed in the, uh, the whole world of steam. And the little boy you saw in that film was Willie Rochford. <laughs> so, <laughs> Willie, the tradition carries on. Yes, yeah, very and, much so. And do you remember that day when Frank Hall was I there? I do. I vaguely remember because there was so much excitement around the place. Yeah. Uh, and, of course, being off school, added to a lot of the excitement <laughs> so yeah vaguely and uh, sometime later you were back in, on television again because uh, the filmmaker program maker david shaw smith he came yes and did a hands program yeah. the, 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 yeah. about craftsmanship and so on back in in 1981 they wanted to, to to make a program about traditional house thatching and of course the the, the trashing set that we saw earlier on would have been used and the, the reefer and binder would have been used for cutting corn predating the modern combine. In the Frank Hall film, I think your, your dad was making the point that you had moved out of steam and he was quite proud of the fact that he had a, a diesel tractor. Yes, yes, and when, I, and when I look at the, it's interesting to look back at, at the footage, that was such a modern shift from the, the, the 30s, 20s and 30s up onto the 50s, 60s and 70s. Uh, to be in the diesel combustion engine, which is where we are now, but it's very much more modern. And I suppose that quote-unquote modern diesel tractor yes. <laughs> was that is now uh, pretty yes, much an antique. Bit, is now an antique. Yes, yeah, very much. <laughs> And 
of course, the whole tradition of uh, the thrashing day in the country was very special. It was. It was also a different, uh, a different working arrangement because that time, a lot of people moved from farm to farm to help one another out. So you had a almost like a bartering system. They help you, you help them, and money was less exchanged. Not like you know modern business. You know, there's very little of that interaction. But that time, people just didn't have that disposable income to pay people for coming to work on the farm. So they they, they helped one another out. So very different. And you needed a lot of labour, of course. I mean, you s you'll see with a modern combine harvester, it's got one man in the combine, one man in the tractor, and very sophisticated. But there was a social aspect to it as well. Of it? course, yes. There was a, a, a. It was always a tradition of the woman of the house, wherever you're trashing, to, to have a, a, a meal. Um, so everybody came in for dinner, and then of course, uh, no no country place without a few drinks, a drop of whiskey, a few Guinness, and that, that all added to the social aspect. And as a little kid you were in that early footage which were cardboard uh, steam engine and you then went on to make uh, a replica, a model steam engine for your kids. Yeah, we made him, uh, uh, my brothers and, and I, we uh, made uh, a scaled model replica of an original steam engine, uh, which is a working model. And re really just as an opportunity to for our kids to have some fun with it because this is a little serious for them at, at this age and also for the daddies to have a little bit of fun as well. <laughs> And those scenes evocative of rural life at another time bring our programme to a close this evening. Do 